you could just say, what's VAB? It doesn't matter. So how would you do that? Well, what you could do is you could say, if I start at uh, A and go up, find all the potentials that I gain and lose until I get to B, right? So let's say I start at VA. So let's say the voltage at point A is something. We don't know what it is, but it really doesn't matter. So I start at VA. Then I go this way, what's going to happen? I'm going to gain potential because I'm going against the current, right? So it's, I'm going to gain 12 times. So I'm going to gain potential 12 times the I1 minus I2 is 0 0.608. Then I'm going to lose 6 volts here, right? Because I'm going from positive to negative. And then I'm going to end up at what? V, VB, right? So I can say VA, and then this one is going to be uh, something like 7.2 minus 6. So 1.296, right? So what you could do is say, oh, OK, so this is, this is positive. Take this to the other side. OK, so the voltmeter, if you put them across those two points, voltmeter is going to read 1.296 volts. And the, the VB is going to be at a higher voltage. The one up there is going to be at a higher voltage. That means if you take the voltmeter and you take the red, if you take the red outlet, put it there, and you take the common, the common outlet, and you take it, put it here, it's going to read positive one point. Uh, 296 volts. If you switch them, you put the common outlet over there and you put the red over here, then it's going to read negative 1.296 volts. You see? Now, I could, have, I could have done this the other way too. I could have started at VB, right? I could have started over here and I could have gone this way. Well, I could have said, okay, start at VB, gain 6, lose. 12 times 0 0.608, and you end up at VA. And you would still get the same answer. Or you could even do this. Go this way. Start at VA, go this way, and you gain voltage, right? Or you can start at VA, go this way. OK, you go uh, 9 volts, negative 10 times I1, and you end up over there. You could take any path to get to VB. And you could still get the same answer. Okay. Oh, what I wanted to show you is now uh, quickly. I wanted to show you the other approach. The the one that's called the Maxwell's loop approach. Now you will see that there's a so the Maxwell loop approach you say I one I two. With the Maxwell loop approach you don't say I one minus I two like that. You just say I one I two. And then you do the You do the left loop. So you go 9 minus 10 plus 6 
minus 12i1, right? You're going like this, minus 12i1. But since you're going against I2, I2 is going up, right? But let me erase this here. So you go 9 minus 10 plus 6 minus 12i plus 12i2, okay? Equals 0. And you would get... Um, no, I forgot the I1 here, 10 I1. So you would get 15 is equal to 22 I1 minus 12 I2. That's my first equation. And then you do the right loop. With the Maxwell's way of doing it, you always do the left loop, right loop. I don't think they ever do the whole loop. You just do the left loop and then the right loop, but instead of doing Instead of worrying about how the current splits, you just say I1 and then I2. And then when you're doing the right loop, what happens? Uh, negative 12 I2 negative 6 negative 8 I2 you see? So this is the main loop, right? This is, you're doing the right loop here. Negative 12 I2, negative 6 negative 8 I2, and then you have to remember that you're going against the, uh, this one, so you have to do uh, plus 12 I1 equals 0. In other words, the pr when you're doing the right loop, the currents in the right loop are all negative because you're going with the I2, but you're going against the I1, okay? So you add the I1 is you, you, you gain the 12 I1. So now you, uh, what this one happens, let's see here. 12 minus, uh, hold, hold on. 12 I1 and then uh, negative 12, negative 8 is what? Uh, negative 20 I2 is equal to 6. This is my second equation. Okay, is this the same second equation that we got last one, uh, or is it different? Okay, now let's put it into the equation solver. Point seven seven is I one, same as the last answer. I want the I two is point one six two. Was that the same equation we got last time for the second equation? But we're still getting the same answer, right? Yeah, it should it doesn't matter what method you use, you should get the same answer, right? It's maybe the only difference between the two methods is how you're approaching it. In the second method, you're just saying, in the Maxwell's method, okay, well, let's title this, Maxwell's loops, and then the other one is Kirchhoff's rules, okay? So um, the, with the Maxwell's loop, what you're doing is just taking each loop separately, I1, I2, and then the, all the currents, all the voltage drops in that loop are negative except for the current of the other one, of the other loop, okay? With the Kirchhoff's loops, what you're doing is you're deciding on a certain flow of current yourself and you're deciding on how the current is going to break up and then based on the circuit that you set up, you are, uh, uh, you are doing um, the, the loops based on those currents. I usually do it with the Kirchhoff's loops myself. It's because it helps me to see how the current is actually flowing uh, if I set it up, you know. 